What's up, guys? Jesus, I don't remember a crazier day in the UFC as this has been in a long time. We'll get, we'll, let's cover briefly everything that's happened, and then I'll get to Kraus and the news that just broke on Twitter right now about, about uh, his phone. So Dillashaw retires. Some of us, that's a shock. The shoulder injury was way worse than a lot of his fans thought. So hopefully down the road we could look back on TJ's career. I don't want to jump on the, on the bandwagon of hating on him. Uh, he was one of my favorite fighters to watch. When TJ was in his prime, what he did with his speed, um, his footwork, his wrestling, his power, I mean, that dude's one of the greats. Say what you will about him getting popped. I look at it for what he's done when he was at his best. Moving forward, <clears throat> Alex Morono, late replacement. Robbie Lawler drops out of the Ponzinibbio fight. Morono steps up on five days' notice. Boom, that's a good fight. Uh, I know that a, a lot of fighters were campaigning for that, um, but Morono gets the nod. He's tough as nails. I like watching Alex fight. Poirier in the hospital. This is wild. Dustin, two days in now, staff infection. They're not yet comparing it to the Robert Whitaker staff of 2018 where Whitaker had it in his stomach and it was really, really bad for about a few days and they didn't know if Rob would ever make a full recovery. We know that he did, thank God. But that, that situation is slowly uh, is being monitored closely. And now here's to the juicy bit. Um, I'll read it from a link. Cross got his phone confis confiscated. And I'm current as tonight, it's it's Tuesday night here in Sydney. I was working behind the scenes on putting a edited and produced video timeline of this whole Kraus saga together when I got this tweet. So I'd rather I'm gonna do this live, obviously. So this is from Josh Thompson. This is gonna get nasty. Insider details and James Krause's gambling scandal reveals confiscation of devices. Um so to spare you the, the recap, you guys have been following my channel. You, you should be up to date on the NSAC, all of the regulations in Canada. Rumors, regulations are going to be put down elsewhere. You should be up to date on Glory MMA, how the UFC uh, is suspending all fighters, uh, even affiliated. TJ Brown, I mean, TJ Brown cross-trains at Glory. Rumors were that he was out of that, Alex Sil um, out of the Eric Silva fight. I heard conflicting story so I don't want to report that but just about an hour ago it was it came out that um with Josh Thompson he was on the McCarthy podcast they do that show together the weighing in podcast and Thompson says quote unquote he's in for a lot man he's looking at serious jail time and then he goes into the explain the severity well we talked about a couple days ago it doesn't take a genius to put two and two together about crimes that are federal, what happens during a federal investigation. And then also you add in the international component to this with the gambling and then money being exchanged. You throw that in there, money being exchanged over international borders with Canada. And then it comes out cross charging $50 for all of his discord users. And then I don't want, I'm putting together, I, I did some research on you look at, there's footage coming out of the Onama fight. Onama, um, David Onama, uh, up and comer stud, was fighting in one of his first fights in the UFC. He was a four to one favorite. And there's footage coming out of Kraus giving him advice after round one of what to do, what not to do. Rumor, speculation on Kraus telling Onama to let it go the distance to where Onama squeaked by a, a decision. And then in the post fight interview, it might have been in the cage. Onama even said that a lot of people made money on that fight. So people were digging deeper and deeper into this cross situation about not only the gambling, the discord, the 1% show he had, but the fixing of fights. And man, it's hard. That's even for me, like that's hard to believe. Like that is shocking. And we'll see. We'll, we'll see as more evidence comes out. Let's finish with, with uh, Thompson who's a little bit closer to the situation firsthand considering, you know, the work he does with Bellator, great work, former, you know, I loved watching Josh Thompson fight. He's one, in my opinion, one of the most underrated guys people forget about um, in the division. I mean, this guy has a win over Anthony Rumble Johnson. <clears throat> and Rumble once told me about Josh Thompson, and I quote, Rumble said, Josh had dogs in his hands. So when Josh speaks, I tend to 
people tend to listen. And he states, and I quote, they're not just taking what he said verbatim on this type of stuff. They've gone and confiscated iPads, computers, his cell phones, his records. And then if you're someone like Derek Minner, they're doing the same to you and so on and so forth. And when he say they, these are the authorities. He also mentioned that according to his understanding, the FBI contacted Krause's gym. And with that development, people may turn and he, people may then turn in each other. It's going to be a matter of time before everyone starts turning in on each other and things are going to get nasty. It is unquestionably a grave concern that could bring James Krause some serious damage, jail time. So we, we could, you guys are all caught up on the UFC fight night, the Minner and the Shyland Ner, Nerd and Becca fight. We all know how that panned out about, you know, the money, which a lot of people aren't aware of why that was such a big deal is because the, the gaming commission looks at bets. These bets are, or the odds are put in, um, you know, in advance. And then they have a data equation, sort of metadata on, you know, plus 180s, plus 200s. And they could then see, they use an algorithm over time. If the odds are placed, we'll say a month in advance, they know for, we'll say a plus 180 over the 10 year um, span of plus 180s being put from Vegas, it's less than 0.5% of odds swinging in A or B uh, one way or another. So with that Minner fight, the odds not only swung, they flip-flopped. And then they not only flip-flopped in against Minner's favor, all of these prop bets were being flooded in on a finish within round one. And then that's what broke the case to catch you guys up on um, from the Discord channel of Kraus actually telling people that that was going to happen, which is gnarly. I'm still on the fence about Minner being let go because uh, of White Dana's reasoning of him going into that fight injured guys every fighter every fighter you cheer for every fighter you've ever you, you know cheered against they all have injuries no professional combat athlete whether they're in a ufc whether they're an mma fighter whether they're a boxer nobody is going in unscathed so dana's excuse on that that's horseshit this is deeper than that okay let's see wager on every card i mean shit Kudos to James, though. They put up his November 18th bets. Those surfaced on Twitter. That's going to be in the story I'm doing. He was eight for eight. And he's not just picking winners and losers. This guy is picking – This is, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a gambler. This guy is picking what round they're ending, how they're going to end, over, under two and a half. Will it be a decision? And on November 18th, the fight night, he, he hit eight in a row, which is crazy. <sighs> So yeah, this is this this article just came out about an hour ago in jail time. You have to think that's a real that's a real possibility, man, because of the federal implications, because of the international implications. Vegas is going to get Vegas is involved here. The integrity of the sport is involved here. The the brass of the UFC, these are powers that be that they want to um, put any sort of water on any fire as quick as they can. It's this, it, it just seems that this fire is spreading out of their control. Stay tuned. I got some store. I got some, like I said, more documentary style content coming out in the next few days. I've been uh, editing with my team on that. These lives though, you know, they've been keeping me busy with all the UFC news. I mean, kudos to TJ. Look, anyone who's ever trained, you know, I grew up boxing. I mean, once again, hopefully he joined, he, he enjoys his retirement and could find his peace. I, I think TJ's skill set, Dillashaw, I'm talking. I never met him person to person. And whether they're a celebrity, a fighter, a famous person, somebody gets in the news, I try to leave judgments at the door. I'm not going to jump on a guy. If I've never met you and I just know you for, you know, what you meant to whatever sport you, you played, I'm not going to judge you on things that are more personal. I mean, yeah, okay, he got popped. I mean, a lot of guys get popped. You know, do we trust him on him saying that uh, – and a lot of guys who are on don't get popped. So when he says that, you know, he only took it for that camp where he tried to cut the 125, I mean, you got to take him for his word. He gets a lot of hate. He's a villain. He's a snake. I like TJ. There, I said it. Um, Alex Moreno, good luck to you, brother. Five-day notice. That's going to be a war. Ponzinibbio, he's fun to watch too. I'm a fan of him. I mean, that's going to be – hopefully Alex is in shape. He is a martial artist. I assume he will be. He runs his own gym. He's always up for a dog fight. It's going to be fun. And what else did we have to cover real quick? Oh, 
dude, Dustin Poirier, hopefully he gets better. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. Staff is always serious. You know, it's, it's nothing to play around with. And, you know, day three in the hospital, hopefully we wake up tomorrow here in Sydney and we see that he's been released uh, from the hospital, that is. And who knows what tomorrow will unfold with more breaking news on this cross drama. If you want to be, if you're not caught up on it, click the playlist, click that link. And I appreciate the support. Leave your comments below. How do you think, uh, you know, is Dil- is Dillashaw a Hall of Famer? Who wins, Murano or Ponzinibbio? Well wishes to Poirier. Where do you think this case is going to cross? We'll chat tomorrow. Flex on. That's a 40-year-old muscle right there. I'm an old head. Stay tuned. I'll see you guys.